Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I'd like to show you some tweaks you can do to your 486 to get a bit more performance out of it and in some cases a lot, a lot of extra performance. So to demonstrate this I'm gonna use this 486 machine here. It's a DX4 overdrive 100 megahertz. So we've got the CPU here and it's cooled by a 80mm front fan that actually gets some air in this case then we got the 30 pin sim here 32 megabytes and we got the under here we got the 256 kilobytes of L2 cache we got an SMC network card we got a generic ID slash IO card for flopping and so on then we got the Cyrix uh, Cyrus Logic uh, 5428 VLB graphics card upgraded from 1 to 2 megabytes and then below we got an ESS uh, Sound Blaster 16 compatible sound card I picked this uh, 486 because it's VLB based and uh, some of the tweaks we're gonna apply are unique to the VLB bus uh, some of the other tweaks are perfectly fine on ISA and PCI2 but since this uh, will cover uh, some additional tweaks you can do it to VLB I picked this system and also the gains are higher on a VLB system compared to a PCI system most likely because the PCI system is just uh, superior in IO performance yeah, so you have a better baseline or higher base performance so yeah, let's uh, get to some uh, tweaking and benchmarking. So we're in the BIOS here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, tweak the timings. That's the first thing, first thing you should do. Uh, there's a lot of performance to be had on a 486, tweaking timings on your RAM, cache, and uh, VLB bus. I'm not gonna benchmark uh, the difference between an untweaked BIOS and a tweaked one. But I do see a lot of people uh, running the BIOS basically stock and you lose so much performance. But this video is mainly about what you should do after you tweak the BIOS. This system will run all the tightest timings just fine. So we have booted into DOS here and I have disabled all my, all my tweaks just so we can get the baseline sort of. So the first program I want to go through here is something called MCLK. So it's a program for tuning your graphics card in DOS. It can change the clock speed, it can change the timing of the RAM, it can change timings on the VLB bus for it, the IO. Uh, it can probably do other things too that I can't remember right now but uh, we're gonna have a quick look here first in the readme here because you're gonna have to read that for your specific card to get up to speed on it uh, we can go to here mclk.txt and we can read this here I'm not gonna read all of it but I'm gonna try to find some interesting bits here so you got uh, which ships d does MCLK support, so in my case I have a 5.4.28, so it's supported. Uh, S3, I tested that on an S3 too, that works for me, a Verge DX. So here we can read here, MC MCLK doesn't properly auto-attack my video chipset, and I have that problem. So you need to force it with the force and the F flag here for force on a lot of chipset. 
and here it uh, basically says F F1 is for Cyrus Logic chipset. So you have like menus. We're gonna show. I'm gonna show that later. But you can list uh, different cards from different brands and uh, the models in from those brands. So for example, here they show Cyrus Logic, and then they pick. Uh, a GD 54 2X, one of the 20 series cards here with the F11, so the series logic and the card model there. And here's an example of how to overclock to 57 MHz. Uh, at least my 5428 runs at 50 MHz. So he basically says set MCLK, well, the command, uh, force 11 to select the card and the model. And then dash zero is another menu, so you have multiple options, we're going to look through that later. But zero is the clock, and uh, don't remember if this is decimal or how it worked out, but uh, this determines the clock speed, 32 equals 57. Uh, the card's going to tell you your real value for your clock later, what it actually is right now, so you can check what you have and so on. So you should read this text file to get up to speed what's suitable for your card if you're gonna do this. So we're gonna run MCLK here just to show how it works. MCLK F and we're gonna get a list of mod uh, like brands, so generic BJ, and I've got size logic S3, 10, 10 T Seng Labs, Trident Microsystems. So if I run MCLK F and pick uh, one for this menu and get the list of cards here and the mine falls under number one there because it's uh, the 5424 and this says 689 so I got the 28 so if I do this again with the F and 1 1 and I think just enter there and then we get a lot of information here so if we look further up here we get adjustable settings, so zero, MCLK memory clock setting, so that's the clock speed. Uh, one is not uh, available, uh, two is ready delay for IO local bus. I have tried that, made no difference. Then we got number three, which is uh, RDY, ready delay for mem write local bus. And that, uh, that you can change that, and that for me does make a difference. So, you could do like this to check the clock. You can go MCLK F110. It should uh, tell me the speed. And it says old MCLK 50.11 MHz, 28D. Uh, the text file doesn't say anything about the D options, but if I recall vaguely, it's. Uh, I think it's how it runs off, uh, it affects how it runs off the clock, I think. So, so I think it's like if you want decimals on the clock speed, like 50.11. I don't remember if you ran without it, you're going like 50 even. But anyway, so on my card, well, the text file said uh, this particular card usually goes to 57 megahertz. The highest I got is 59. I can go higher, but the way to stability test this is basically to run Windows 9 to 5 or something like that because you're gonna see artifacting once you get too high. So say I want to set that now, uh, 59 in my case. Uh, okay, F1103 D I think I had for that. Uh, now it says old man clock 50.11 20 new man clock 5906. 33D. So we can try, try something else. Uh, F11 uh, is 32. D0 That's 57. So that's how the clock works. I think we can check out the uh, uh, timings too. I think that's option number 3. And I uh, don't know if we have to type anything, I don't think. So we do like that, and we get a list of what we can run. And I'm pretty sure my ran 
uh, are the right mem delay 3t so that's one it says so that's 3t slash 01 so lower is faster so we can go like this mck dash f one one let's see here three zero so now it says new mem delay 2t zero and I think it will go this again here. Uh, three. It should say, yeah, so all the uh, RDY right mem delay 2t. And why I think this makes a difference, but not the other one, is this, this affects the right delay to the memory on the card. So you reduce the access time to the card from the CPU, which makes sense that since this since most graphics cards does is just a frame buffer so you want to fill that as fast as possible for the most frames and the thing I noticed too at least with VLB cards is that even if you like control or delete to push the reset button the card will remember this at least on my system there's no hardware reset so you have to do a full power cycle if, if you somehow get stuck or want to restore it and obviously, if you, once you have something that you like, you can put in your auto exec to make it uh, run on boot. And, uh, so this works on Windows and so on too. So we're gonna I'm gonna boot into Windows, everything at default, so no overclocking or nothing. And we're gonna run a benchmark of WinTune. Can actually, and we're also gonna run a benchmark in DOS uh, VGA speed, so we can compare how it runs stock and then overclocked, and uh, with reduced timings. And on some cards you can also set the memory timing. Uh, I think on S3 I can technically do that, but I think that was the lowest already, so it didn't make much sense. So we're here in DOS, and uh, we're gonna run VGA speed here first to get the baseline uh, uh, performance on the graphics card here. The, tr the transfer rate here to memory. So I'm gonna go with zero here to take this mode, and we got 10.3 uh, megabytes per second. 255 frames per second. So if we go into MCK here now, we'll run uh, 1 1 0 33d for overclocking down to 59, and we can see we switch from 50 to 59 megahertz. Then we're gonna do the timing. Now we went from 3T to 2T. So now we go back to VGA speed here again. And as you can see, we have 300 frames and 12.2 megabytes per second. So both the, the timing and the frequency does increase the performance. In DOS, the frequency has little impact. If your CPU limited, so you have a low frame rate, it's not going to help you much. But if you're uh, if running like an FPS game like Duke Nukem 3D and you have a really fast 486 CPU, on the as the frame rate goes up in the, the uh, in the easy to run scenarios, it will increase even more. It doesn't have as much effect on uh, where your CPU bottleneck when you can't pump the frames to the card. The timings seems to do the most in DOS for me, uh, but we're gonna look at Windows too because the frequency actually makes a difference in Windows. So I'm gonna re code boot the machine and we're gonna try from Windows now and look at the difference. So we're here in Windows and uh, we're gonna run some Win297. Uh, first off here we got 800 by 600, 256 colors. It's pretty suitable for a 486. Uh, I'm gonna run Win297 here. And everything is stock, we're gonna verify that later. But uh, everything on the, the tweaking to the graphics card is stock right now. So we're gonna analyze the system here. And this benchmark is quite fast, so that's a good thing.
So I'm gonna look at sharks here and I'm gonna select video performance. And this is our current system here. And uh, this is the same system, a slight deviation here, but it's basically the same. So we're gonna close Wing 2 and start the command prompt here. And for, B, for MCT to work in Windows, you need to be in full screen, so that Alt plus F11 to toggle that. Uh, what do you call? Oh. Yeah, Alt F11. So you can go to. Uh, Go down frequency, the force, uh, the frequency we're going to do 0, 33D. So I went from 50 to 59, and then we're going to have MC again. 0 for the timing, and we went from 3T to 2T. We can start wind tune again, and we should have some free performance here now. We got the sharks again here and we select a video and as you can see the red graph got a lot bigger so similar similar performance gains that we saw in VGA speed about a 20 or something 15 20 percent uplift I think it is so it does make a difference to tune your clock speed and your uh, timings on the card or to the bus in memory the, Pretty sure from what I read, the, 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 the Sears Logic 5428 is known to have relatively slow memory. So I tested and compared to like Mark 32s and stuff like that, and uh, uh, I found that to be a pretty good performance actually. And with some tweaks, you can get even more. So yeah. So the next thing we're gonna look at is some uh, VSA extensions to get to some really good uh, games in uh, games to support VSA 2.0. So that will be the next thing, and then we will combine this uh, the, the the tweaks I did now with the VSA later. But we're gonna run the VSA tweaks versus the VSA 2.0 version versus the 1.0 first. Then we have these tweaks on top. So for uh, VSA BIOS extension, what we will use is uh, Cytec Display Doctor 5.3a. There are different versions, but this will give us VSA 2.0 support. There are other uh, VSA extensions you can use for your graphics card. If you can find, this is turned on both ones, I think. And if you can find one specific for your card, that usually gives you the best gains. So. But uh, this one is quite universal, supports pretty much anything you can think of. So we got a list of cards, I think, here. Uh, I think there's a long list here. Yeah, pretty much anything you can think of is supported. So that's pretty nice. You have to install it and register and so on. But uh, it's. Uh, and uh, so you can run uh, the different tools here and stuff, config tools. Because when you run the extensions, your picture might shift on your CRT to the left or right, something like that. So the, the tool so you can like tweak that. So when you jump between this 1.0 game and 2.0, you can uh, you don't have to adjust your monitor every time, which is quite annoying. So there are a lot of tools here in this program here to tweak it. But I'm not going to fully go through how to how to set it up because the, it's you basically install it and register it and run it uh, and. Uh, there is a readme file obviously to how to do it, so it's uh, not that difficult. And if you run most like specially made uh, this extension for your graphics card, they usually use a simple program you run, you can put it in your alt text button, it will load the VS extension. So we will use that and to use that I'm just gonna uncomment in my alt here. 
those two lines. But before we do that, actually, we should actually benchmark something. So I'm gonna go to my game folder here. So I have my games. So I have no tweaks loaded now at all. I need to change my screen to normal load. Send launch to 3D. And uh, a lo lot of people know how to add um, VSI extensions, so that this is not uh, like that uncommon for people to do. And I was actually recommended back in the day to do. Sound. You can select a new game here. We can type P and rate. And that will give us the frame rate in the top right, the top left corner. I'm just gonna config, recalibrate the monitor see if that helps a bit. Hopefully you can see it. It says 22 right now here where we spawn. So what I, and the thing is when you use this uh, uh, bench, when you measure in frame rate in Duke, the actual weapon you have picked up affects your frame rate. So you can go with no weapon for example. It's not as obvious with these ones, but with the shotgun and uh, I think with the bazooka, uh, rocket launcher. One notes, but we have about 48 frames when we drop down in that uh, band there. So we got what? Let's see, aim at the sign in the middle there. 21, 22. I'm just gonna kill everything here. Stand there and look there, and I got about 18 frames aiming at uh, the display in that cache registry. 19, 20, so let's say 19 there. Something else we can do also is look into this corner here. I got about 45 ish looking into the corner. So, what we're gonna do now is enable the VS extension here. Drive and, and I'm gonna just comment in uh, into my alt exec here. So the way, okay, must be the wrong so I rammed out a few things here. This is on my MCK stuff here. I don't think you have to normally load. Uh, UV config if you just use UniVB, but but I noticed when I run MCLK first and then UniVB, I get a glitch where I need to start Duke two times the third time. It doesn't render properly, like it's corrupted and the second time work. But running U U UV config here just after UniVB, that those extension fixes that glitch. So, uh, so, so yeah, that's a tip if you have the uh, corrupted graphics if you run UniVB after MCLK. But if you just run UniVB, you shouldn't need the second line here. So, once I reboot now, we should uh, have this device extension loaded. But we should not have any other tweaks to the actual graphics card. So, so we're gonna run set up here and boot now and switch over to VSA 2.0, otherwise we won't benefit from uh, the VSA extension. Uh, same resolution, yes. Save and launch. You can't even launch if you don't have support for 2.0 like that. So you're gonna know it's working or not if it actually starts. That ship once it does this crash there. 28, 29. It's a good idea to let it stabilize a bit there. Oh, 
I'm gonna be hard and say 28, but I'm at 29. So 28 and we had, I think, 21, 22 before. So that's at least another 6 FPS, probably 7. So that's a good bump. And the minimum frame rate is really what you want to improve. It's gonna help with this one. I know I have 48 here when I'm up here. I'm not up at 96 there, so like twice. See the gun here gives me about 30 and the uh, bazooka about 28. So we had like 21 before, then we got 30, 31, so like 30 FPS. I actually don't remember if I had a bazooka up before or not, probably had, but uh, yeah, it's still a similar amount as before. So now let's look at the casual display here, about 24, 22, 24 now. What does that do? 22. And that gives 24, 25. So around 24 frames there from what I apparently had 19. Look into the corner here. I'm seeing 90 something. 100 there. So let's go 96 seems to pop up a lot. So yeah, about twice the, the high, on the higher side then. And uh, I would say about an 4% uh, increase in the minimum. So the interesting now is to combine this with the overclocking and stuff. Uh, actually, overclock won't do that much, if I recall, but the timing is still a bit. We're gonna see here. So we're back here in DOS, and uh, all the tweaks are loaded. The overclocking, the timings, and uh, the sub 2.0 vice extension. It's loaded by autoexec.bat, so I'm gonna run to Nuke and 3D here. Dusk. Yeah, that's Down here is about 28. So very similar to before, but like I said, uh, the overclocking doesn't do much in DOS with low frame rates here. It's about the same. But this, the frame rate rates go up, it should help with. Now we've got over 100 there now, where I never saw over 100 before there. So this just adds a little bit extra here and there. But everything stacks up as you tweak things. So I'm gonna aim at that. Around 30, so very similar to before, I was also 30. Aim there. Go with the gun here. 26, say 25, but uh, it's under 26 sometimes too. We have 24 before, so a slight improvement there. I'm look into the corner here. Quite regularly now, see it tipping over to 100 here now. Which uh, didn't do that much before, it did sometimes. So let's see 100 average. So there's a couple of more frames, like maybe four more frames or something. So yeah, it does make a difference. And compared to what we had, like with no tweaks to the graphics card at all, we started out at about 21 minimum and uh, the worst case, no, 19 was the worst case, and 25 after tweaking. Uh, the more typical minimum was 21 versus 28. Then we went from 45 on the high side maximum to about 100. So that's basically a doubling and some change performance so this game is a lot more playable this way and most of it is obviously due to the VSO tweaks 
but the fact that you can overclock your cards and change timings and your memory and so on and your bus and depending on the card and type of bus uh, your PCI will be and so on like I said I picked the system because I can change some VLB timings which you obviously can't on a PCI card because it's not VLB so I'm gonna run another game here now and it's not before or after or anything like that I'm just gonna see if I can find it all the stuff I'm thinking of running Redneck Rampage, it's basically Duke Nuke and 3D, just like Blood is all based on the same engine. Uh, but this is a lot more demanding uh, Redneck here. And it's, uh, I think we can find a read in here maybe. See what this says. I think the minimum requirement, uh, okay, that's for something else. I think the minimum requirement for this particular game is a Pentium 90 and a recommendation for a Pentium 133. Okay, what's that? Uh, I think there's RR. Yeah, RR.exe, I think it was. So, this is if you're gonna run this on a 486, then you should have something like a 180 MHz to a 266 MHz 486, and that doesn't exist. This Mr. CPU Galaxy that can get to 200. So, but this is a 100 MHz 486, when you should have a, the equivalent of 180 MHz minimum. The game is recommended to run a 640x480, but this runs 320 by 240 now, and it's just unplayable on a 486 at uh, that kind of higher resolution. So it's uh, not as good looking as the developer wants. That is a bit stuttering right now, but it tends to actually smooth out a bit here as it loads stuff. But I remember playing this game on my first computer, which actually wasn't a 46 or anything fancy like that. It was a newer machine because I got in later the game. It was a Pentium 166 with a Sirius Logic 5446. And it didn't run too well on that thing, but I knew nothing about the VSI extension. The card didn't support 2.0, so I didn't know anything about that. So it, could, it obviously ran better than this, but it didn't run as good as you might think because it lacks some tweaks. And I probably ran it to 640x480. So, considering. This runs pretty well. Like I said, I have a 486 at 132 MHz uh, with 64 MHz of RAM and SCSI drive. And this thing actually is perfectly playable on that system. The problem with this system is mainly that it's a bit laggy initially uh, as it loads in assets, but it's, if it actually loaded them in, you know, like we started now, it's a bit laggy. Or quite a lot actually. But as it loads stuff in, it actually runs better eventually. So, it's, that is a less of an issue on a faster system. Let's see. But as you can see, you can actually play this. I mean, I wouldn't want to play on this over a pencil machine, but it's not the point here now. The point is that you should have but twice the CPU performance to actually run this game and it will be remotely playable. Can you die? So as you can see it stutters a bit when new things go okay. in. Well, I, I, I couldn't dream of running this on a 486 back in the day without uh, knowing some of these tweaks. So that's basically it for uh, tweaking your 486. But yeah, this is a DX4100, so pretty decent 486, but not super fast. Not the fastest, obviously, as you can go, but it's pretty typical of a high end, or even more than uh, most high end 486 back in the day, with all the RAM and stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you like to play with us, you can join us on Discord or you can just chat about retro hardware and share your experience with us. 
when it's possible, we host public LANs here in Sweden that you can attend. You can visit our Facebook page or Discord for more information. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.